wearing the silliest hat ever. And how would you even know behind this mountain of packages? Seriously, it's like five foot by three foot by three foot. It's ridiculous. This has gotten silly. Now, a fair amount of this is actually stuff for review. Some of it is uh, stuff for diagnostic repair. Some of this stuff is for uh, commissions. But there, there better be some swag in here somewhere. I shall be terribly disappointed. Anyway, uh, let's talk about uh, notes. Uh, this upcoming weekend, I will be at the Fort Borst War, uh, which is we're having to, uh, as a send-off for one of our members who is being uh, deployed. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Should be very silly. Hopefully I'll get some good footage. Uh, the weekend after that is Afterworlds, which should be fairly fun. I'm going as an NPC, but not as anything particularly interesting, so it should be a nice relaxed game for me, actually. I hope. We'll see. Next year it should get interesting. Uh, weekend after that, I am going to Idaho to perform my youngest sister's wedding. I am now an ordained minister, so... That's happening now. Uh, in October, I'll be going to Ragnar Oktoberfest down in California. Should be loads of fun. A whole bunch of us are going down. We're going to be a team in the uh, sniper battles, and we are going to get absolutely wrecked, and it's going to be fabulous. And then we're going to be doing the uh, HVZ stuff, which should be amazing. Uh, weekend after that... Um, actually, I have no idea what's up the weekend after that. Uh, also, next, or later this month, in Blaine, Minnesota, there is a big Nerf event going on. Loads of stuff being given away, and it is uh, a charity event for bully prevention, which is cool. All right. Questions, 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 questions. Dale Linton. What are your thoughts on turning an old Toys R Us into a Makerspace Nerf arena? Well, if there's one uh, available, go for it. Uh, that's definitely plenty of space. Obviously, just because they went out of business doesn't mean the buildings are going to be free or leasable or that zoning will even allow that. Uh, but it's definitely something we're looking into if you have the funds and one nearby. Logan Kunkel. Do you prefer spring blasters or flywheel blasters, and what is your preferred sidearm? Uh, it depends entirely on my loadout. I enjoy both. I've got springers, I've got flywheels, I've got air blasters. I, I don't have one particular style that I prefer over the others, and my sidearm is dependent on my loadout. If I'm going with my super heavy, then my sidearms are a pair of strifes. If I'm going with my light, then it tends to be hammer shots. Uh, yeah, so whatever works best for you. Venos Fan 121. How do I remove the yellow ring that holds the barrels on a Punisher? Well, there are two screws on either side that you take out, and then there is... Um, glue, or I don't think it's actually solvent weld, I think it's actually just glue, um, that I was able to, on, on the first one that I did, that I built tear out of, um, I had to cut the whole thing off, and it was arduous, and I ended up having to, to cut it all the way through, and then pry it off all the way around. The second one that I took the barrel off of for a different build, um, I was able to pop it loose just by twisting it. There was very little glue involved, and I was able to just pop it. Um, I would recommend taking those screws out, and then using a, um, a flathead screwdriver or a knife or something and going along the edge and just trying to pop loose the glue and hopefully you'll get lucky. j -Row. Is it possible to make a slam fire Magnus Master Key? Well, my general rule on questions like this is of course it's possible. We've literally built spaceships. So making one nerf blaster do something that other nerf blasters are capable of doing, namely in this case, slam fire. Uh, is definitely possible. I don't know how feasible it would be because the Magnus is not naturally slam fire and you would have to find a way so that when you slide the, the slide all the way forward um, it automatically engages the, the, the release, the trigger release, uh, which would certainly be possible. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you could come up with some kind of a lever that gets pressed that releases it or um, something. I, I would take a look at the, the way the catch mechanism is designed. I don't know exactly how it works off the top of my head. I haven't modified a whole lot of Magnoxon. Um, but compare that to the slam fire mechanism in, say, an Alpha Trooper or uh, a, dem uh, a Rampage or a Raider, and I, I, I want to say their catches are 
different. But it's... I'm sure there's a way to do it. Zachary Garcia. Do you think Nerf should make a rival sniper rifle? Generally, when I refer to Nerf sniper rifles, I put it in air quotes because, to me, a sniper rifle needs to be something that you can hit someone with from so far away, they don't even know you were there until they're already dead. Um, and even the most powerful Nerf blasters that we have ever managed to come up with don't have that kind of range. I mean, 200 feet, 250 is, you know, the ho the longest ranges I've heard of anybody hitting um, consistently. And that's not really all that far. Um, and the issue with Rival is it just doesn't have the, the way the rounds are designed. Uh, there seems to be a very hard limit on how far you can ever get the range out of them. Now, I'm reasonably certain one of the blasters somewhere in this mountain is, in fact, a rival burn. Um, so I'll actually get to test and see what kind of a range you can get out of a um, an actual um, intentional long-range rival blaster, uh, purpose-built rival sniper rifle. Uh, and we'll get to see how well that actually turns out. Uh, I don't know that it would ever be worth... Um, nerfs time to try to build something that's supposed to be long range with rival because I don't know that the, the, the ammunition can hold up to it. Uh, but, you never know. I mean, it'd be neat if they came out with a rival blaster that looked like a sniper rifle. Uh, but whether they could actually make one that truly functioned like one, I don't know that it would ever be worth the effort. Jack Lastly. What would you say to a teen who wants to get into modding? Uh, I would recommend watching my Monday Mod Tips series. I, I'm pretty sure I've got them all in a playlist, or I should put them all in a playlist. Uh, there's a couple in there on just on first-time mods, what you should start with. Um, I recommend starting with a very simple single-shot springer, just to get you used to the concept of you know, what kind of working mechanisms are in them. If you want to go straight to Flywheel, get yourself a Strife, or one of its many, many variants, uh, the semi-automatic Flywheel Blasters. Uh, just get used to opening up blasters, look at the tools that you need. I've got a video on, you know, beginner's tools, and yeah, that's why I made that series, was to help, you know, beginning modders get into things. William Davis, do you think a phaser rifle from Star Trek Voyager could be made from the Evader? Well, let's take a look at the two of them side by side. So, yeah, there is, you know, it's got the, you know, the, the back handle, the front handle, and kind of the thumb hole stock, uh, but that's about where the similarity ends. Uh, with enough epoxy, anything's possible, and you could definitely make one look like one if you weren't worried about it still firing, if you weren't, um, but that would be kind of silly, because you're never going to get an evader to really, you know, like, cosplay level resemble one, it's just not the right shape. Not, I mean, it's, yes, there's a vague similarity, but um, for cosplay level accuracy, it's never going to be there. Um, so, I mean, from a distance, if you squint, you could probably make one look like one vaguely. Um, if you just wanted one because you really like that phaser and you want something that vaguely resembles it, yeah, it, it could be done well enough. I mean, paint job and some cosmetic work, and yeah, it could be done. Tommy Lynn! What do you think of a Nerf P90 out of the rival shotgun? What? Okay, let's take a look at those two side by side. Yeah, I have no idea where you, how you think that would remotely work out. The Atlas is a front pump shotgun with no stock, and the P90 is a full auto bullpup. I mean, yes, they both, you know, have the magazine on the top, but that is quite literally where the similarity ends, so... Not sure how you think that would work out. Mm. Stormtrooper1138. Are you excited for Clone Wars Season 7 coming out this fall? Well, I am now. I didn't know they... I thought the show was done. So, yeah. That'll be cool. Geeky Kitty. In general... Do you prefer Asian or European-style dragons? 
I'm partial to the European, and personally, I'm partial to the ones that have four limbs and wings, uh, as a per as opposed to ones where the wings are the front limbs. I, I believe the D and D term for that is wavern, but uh, yeah. Asian dragons are very, very cool looking, though. All right, this is gonna have to be lobbed over the top, and I, I I'm not gonna get anywhere close. Ah, wasn't as far off as I thought. R.J. Radinsky, have you heard of Battletech? No. Froopy, what is your Farverite? Farverite? Sounds like kryptonite for cheating football players. Farverite, I dig it. Anyway, what is your favorite flavor of sunflower seed? I wasn't aware there was more than one flavor of sunflower seed, so... Original? Azazel Damon, do you have a battle cry? Uh, yeah, the crew actually did. Our battle cry was Vos Volo Bellum, Vos Adepto Bellum. Um, which roughly and poorly translates to If it's war you want, it is war you will get. It was both the motto of the crew and what we would say at the beginning of battles. The KGB. Do you think the Ghost Ops of Vader could be turned into an MG-42 or an MG-34? Again, with enough epoxy, anything's possible. Um... But it wouldn't be my first choice at all. Um, I mean, I understand what you're getting at. It, it has the side-fed magazine, and both of those guns, while normally belt-fed, they did make um, drums that held a short belt, uh, thus making it much more mobile. Um, but that, that really isn't how I would go about it. I would be much more inclined to uh, use a Raider magazine well and mount it onto the side of a Rapid Strike or a Strife or something and then put a full auto kit in it since the Evader is, as far as I know, semi-auto. Is it? I should look into that. I don't actually have any idea. Um, well, I'm not a fan of the Evader, just cosmetically. It's not my thing. Um, but, I mean, if you change almost everything about the Evader, take off the thumb hole stock, uh, take off the whole front foregrip, uh, put a completely different barrel on it, give it a paint job, so replace almost everything. Yeah, you can make it look like an MG-42 or an MG-34. Um, just not how I would go about doing it. Nerf guy on the bench. What kind of Skittles do you like most? I like the pre-green apple original Skittles. Orc at War 98. What is your favorite gun, tank, ship, and soldier from World War II? I'm very partial to the Tommy gun. I just like it. I know it's actually bef you know, it was before. It was actually intended to be used in World War One, but it didn't get into production uh, before the war ended. Huh. Peace. Um, and it saw a lot of civilian use before World War II. Uh, but I really like it, just because it's iconic and nifty. Uh, for tanks, I am a fan of the Jag Panther tank destroyer. Just always like the look of it. Plus, I used it a lot in uh, A Bridge Too Far, the computer game, uh, and it was just unstoppable. The, the allies had nothing that could even slow it down. For ships, uh, I'd go with the Bismarck. Just, I like that it went down fighting, all guns blazing, took out several other battleships with it. Um, all of the main major powers had their own super battleship. The Germans had the Bismarck, we had the Arizona, uh, the Japanese had the Yamato, uh, the Yamato went down all guns firing as well, uh, but it got taken out by aircraft primarily. And the Bismarck, while its rudder got taken out by a torpedo, it was largely shelled by other ships, or at least it got the chance to, to, to fight other ships. Um, the Arizona, you know, sank in Pearl Harbor. Um, and that was kind of the final clinching proof that battleships were outdated, that war had, naval warfare had evolved beyond battleships, that you were never going to have major battleship on battleship engagements anymore because aircraft were just going to take them out before they ever got close enough, um, for the most part. Uh, which we knew that by the end of World War One, it had become fairly clear that, you know, the dreadnoughts that they mass produced and then almost didn't use at all, uh, and then in World War Two, the same thing, where there were a couple of engagements of actual big fleets, you know, and they hunted the, the, the Bismarck down, uh, and then there were some in the Pacific, but not a lot. It was mostly aircraft finding and sinking fleets. Um, 
the, the big thing that the, the big ships were used for was land bombardments. Uh, you know, we shelled the beaches of Normandy before we went in with ships, and we shelled all of the islands in the Pacific as we went through. Uh, but very rarely did we actually have ship to ship, whereas the Bismarck did get to go down fighting at other ships, and so I always kind of thought that was fitting. For uh, soldiers, um, J. Fred Crouch, Captain J. Fred Crouch, was my favorite soldier. He was my grandfather. He was a captain uh, under Patton, originally went there to teach history to the officers so that they'd have some idea what they were blowing up uh, and try to get them to not blow up too many historical buildings. Uh, and then he ended up getting, you know, shipped to the front because they needed officers, and he was, I believe, a lieutenant when they got to one side of, I want to say the Rhine, uh, and by the time he got to the other side, he was a captain, because he was the la highest ranking officer still alive, and the highest ranking officer in a company is a captain. So he became a captain, and then proceeded to crawl to Berlin on his belly with the rest of Patton's army. Talon Talon, do you watch Game of Thrones? I did. I read the you know, I read the books, or some of the books. I think I started watching the show before I started reading the books. I don't remember what order. Um, probably watched the show and then read the books. Uh, but they kill off the only character I really particularly enjoyed, and the remaining characters I just could not bring myself to care about. Um, Daenerys and Jon Snow, I, they just annoy me. They're idiots. Um they don't listen to their advisors, and they're stupid, uh, and they make a lot of stupid mistakes that get a lot of people killed, and usually when a character is stupid in Game of Thrones, they die! These characters, well, Jon Snow did die, but it didn't keep! Which is annoying. Um, but I will, I, I don't remember how far I got. Um, I think I gave up somewhere in season three and a half, which is about where I quit reading books, so like, I don't even know who any of these characters are, and I've lost interest. Um, yeah, it just, mm, it happens to me a lot in shows where I just be like, I want all these people dead. And, uh, you used to be able to rely on Game of Thrones to kill the people you wanted dead, but uh, I will eventually watch it all just because there's dragons. Monty Sesquideus. That is a fabulous name. How well does a Caliburn work as a missile launcher? Actually, if you have the right barrel... The caliber actually makes a magnificent rifle grenade launcher um, for firing demolisher rockets. Yeah, they fire beautifully off of it. Uh, unfortunately, they don't fit on scar barrels, and so or like on the good scar barrels, they would probably actually fit quite well on those uh, worker scar barrels. But those don't fit so well on the caliber. So eh, um, I unfortunately I was hoping that I I was excited about using the mega burn as a um, Shot or rifle launcher, rocket launcher, rifle grenade launcher. Um, but I suspect the barrel is actually going to be too wide. I'll find out when I actually get it open later in this video. Avner Sagal, what is your opinion on Pokemon? I don't have one. Never got into it. So tried Pokemon Go when that was a big thing, but it, it didn't grab me. So. I could probably name five Pokemon, and I wouldn't probably be able to identify three. Salty Android. What would you do if I ran at you with my homemade Nerf axe? I would wait until you were about ten feet away, and then I'd tag you with a blaster. Because I'm a schmuck. I have no idea where that one went. All right! Let's deal with this mountain of packages. <laughs> but seriously, this is pretty ridiculous. The post office had a lot of questions. All right, we've cleared the bench. <laughs> there are piles of packages everywhere. This is going to take forever. It's going to be fantastic. This will probably take a couple of takes since it's already 11 o'clock gonna be fun. Anyway, we will start with this letter, which has apparently come to me by Royal Mail. Boftown. Taylor Lorena, P.O. Box 111515, Tacoma, Washington, 98411, The Colony, uh, the United States of America. August 28th, 2018. Dear Captain, 
I write to you with warm and humble greetings from old Blighty. Far across the sea, I have in recent months found myself a watch of your electronic video content on the internet platform known as YouTube. I noticed that you, too, prefer the written form of communication delivered by the postal carrier as is the correct way to convey the Queen's English. Your videos have become a companion in my workshop as I have sewn a myriad of equipment for easing the burden of carrying equipment of participants in our shared foam projectile sporting hobby. I implore you to continue with your work. Such a gregarious personality can only be a boon for this joint endeavor. If there are any other speakers of the true English that view your content, then I would urge you to point them in the direction of Britnerf, the home of the community here in the old country. Our team of game organizers lead a variety of games all over the United Kingdom to suit all tastes. I am positively certain fellow British consumers of your content would relish knowing that there is a home for them here. I wish you the best health and best in your coming projects. Yours faithfully, Boff. www.boftac.co.uk See? This guy gets it. This is why I love letters. This is probably one of the coolest letters I've ever received. That is absolutely fantastic. All right, so for those of you who nerf in the United Kingdom, Brit nerf, check them out. Boftac.co.uk. Give them, give them a look. That is magnificent, sir. Absolutely magnificent. All right. Packages. All right, these first two are not exactly fan mail, but I have a story to tell that hopefully someone out there can explain to me. These actually come to me from Nerf. Well, the Nerf fulfillment, anyway. Uh, they are not. Um, as they promised when I went to Jared's Epic Nerf Battle, they were going to send all of us uh, YouTubers all of this year's lineup. Uh, everybody else got them, and Jared got them. Yeah, he got nothing. Which, we all know why. Um, but, this happened, and I'm curious as to why. Uh, I had previously not looked into Nerf perks, because I don't buy a lot of new Nerf blasters. I tend to buy used Nerf blasters. Uh, that's kind of my thing, with the goodwilling and all that. Um, so I never had enough, you know, new purchases to ever really make it worth my while. A couple here and there, and I, I suppose if I had been... Um, keeping track of them and, and putting them in, I, they would have added up, and I probably could have gotten myself some neat stuff. But I hadn't. And then this year came around, and the Hades came out, and the Prometheus came out, and I really, really wanted them. So when they first came out, I went ahead and splurged and bought them. And since that was $270 worth of Nerf, um, that was $27 worth of Nerf perks. Um, so I figured, why not? Time to finally go ahead and sign up. I signed up. I... Um, Put in the barcodes, I uh, uh, submitted a copy of my Amazon receipts and submitted it. And I'm not sure if, if you don't know how Nerf perks work, they actually verify it so that you're not, you know, just scanning the same barcode over and over again. You have to show your receipts and then they verify the receipts and all of that. And when they contacted me and said, okay, it's been verified, you've gotten your points. I went and I looked up the points and... And I, I noticed something weird. The Prometheus is worth 20,000 points. The Hades is worth 7,000 points. So, and you get a tenth of the value in points for the blasters. So I should have gotten 2,000 for the Prometheus and 700 for the Hades, thus giving me 2,700 points, which is roughly $27 worth of, you know, merchandise that you can then redeem on their shop. I did not get 2,700 points points, I got 27,000 points. So instead of giving me a tenth of the value, they gave me the full value. And I decided not to bring this up because I didn't want it. So I, before they could realize they'd made a mistake, went ahead and redeemed my points for another Hades and another Prometheus. I would have gotten a um, Infinus because that's what I really wanted. Uh, but it wasn't available on Nerf Perks for some reason. Um, I also could have gotten half of the rest of the lineup if I really felt like it. Uh, but I decided to just go with buy one, get one free. So this is the free Hades I got. 
And this one, presumably, I haven't actually checked. Sure enough, is my essentially free Prometheus. So, that's neat. And uh, there have been a number of theories. It could have been a simple glitch. But I submitted them both separately, and they both got the, the double points. So it would have been a glitch that was happening site-wide, but I didn't hear anybody else mention this. Though they may not have for the same reasons that I did, as I didn't want Nerf to notice and go, sorry, we're gonna, we're gonna take those points back. Um, alternatively, some people who I mentioned this to have theorized that they actually recognized my name when I put in my email address, which I really doubt. Can't imagine they flagged me to get extra points just so they could, you know, give me stuff. Because the next time I submitted, um, well, the next, I bought a bunch of, um, Kronoses, Kronoxen, to be able to do the, the, the test of the springs. And I put them in, and they got the normal value. So, no idea. Uh, alternatively, you get a full value for the first items you put in. It was a one-time glitch on the website? I don't know. So if anybody has a theory on what was up with that, let me know. Just don't tell Nerf. Alright. Let's look at other stuff that isn't technically fan -made. These two items come to me from the truly and utterly amazing Captain Slut. As mentioned earlier in the video, pretty sure you know what they are. Gosh, I'm looking forward to seeing them. He put the instructions in the wrong ones. The Rival Burn. So this is a Caliburn that fires Rival. Okay, that's just entirely too cool. I asked him to, to give it to me in uh, Phantom Core colors because I like Phantom Core as my Rival color of choice since they won't let me have orange. So there will be videos on this, which should be really fun. The Mega Burn, which I had him print me in Mega colors, because Mega should be red. Uh, he was kind of surprised I didn't ask for them in uh, orange and black, but my other Caliburn is in orange and black, and I wanted to be able to tell them apart. So, I got them all in a different color, just because that was neat. So this is a Caliburn chambered in Mega. Doesn't have the filled-in handle. That is interesting. I'll have to... I can print those myself, though. Um... That is really cool. It also does have the new teardown style um, upper receiver. So you can just take these pins out and the receiver apparently comes apart more easily for maintenance and whatnot. And this the re release has M. The other one the release has R. So that's really cool. Oh, and he gave me all the bells and whistles, the foregrip, the sight. That's just... That is cool. So I saw a picture. He posts, you know, all of the builds that he does on Facebook. Uh, and um, he posted a picture of the first Mega Burn. And I commented that I simply had to have one in my life. And he said, well, I sell them on my Etsy page. Or I can send you one if you'll do a video. <laughs> I love that man. I can't imagine what I've done to make him like me so much. So, yeah, this will get its own video as well. A Nerf Science video. Uh, in the... I don't know when, but eventually there will be a video on this, especially with the new AccuFakes and AccuStrikes. I have the large magazines. It's going to be fantastic. So look forward to videos about those. They're so pretty. Anyway, check out Captain Slug's Etsy page. You can get the blasters. You can get the parts. You can get um, add-on bits. He's got all sorts of stuff on there. That's also all available on Thingiverse. Links in the description, of course. All right, now for some more not actually fan mail packages. These come to me from the Nerf Wolf. He reached out to me and said, hey, would you be willing to review some stuff from my Etsy shop? And I said, that sounds like fun. So I went to his Etsy shop and I ordered an item. And uh, at that point, he informed me, uh, I was actually just going to send you some stuff. So he sent me the other two ones that I hadn't ordered, which I think was the, the long and the short. I ordered the mid-range one, and then he sent the other two. Could have gotten a long one. I don't remember. Dear Captain Xavier, thank you for letting me send you free stuff. I am a huge fan of free stuff. Shameless fan of free stuff. As you probably know, these are handmade products, so 
slight variations and mishaps bound to happen. I won't be listing product info here since this is available on my Etsy page and I don't want to keep and I want to keep it short. I will be adding more color customization options and cool patterns to the products. My next line of swords will be more um, focused on LARPers. However, this is only the beginning. I have grand plans for my Etsy shop. <laughs> I also plan to send you some fan mail uh, with a strategy-based card game I'm working on. Ooh, that sounds fun. Uh, it would be awesome if you could link my YouTube channel, the Nerf Wolf, in the video description. The quality is nothing to brag about, but because I am waiting for my new film gear to start... Um, posting regularly. Never stop being awesome and may your beard grow ever epicer. Sincerely, the Nerf Wolf, aka Benjamin. Well, that is fantastic. So, what we have here, as you can see, are boffers. Fairly um, simple construction, but there is a reason for that, and that is that they are all also blowguns. So, thrusting is not really an option with these because. Uh, the tip would would stab, so they're non-thrust safe, um, but the cross guards are foam, so they are fairly safe, fairly stout. Don't know how well they would hold up to, like like you said, these aren't really designed for serious LARPing, they're more for the casual boffer combat you see in Nerf Wars, where it's mostly just bopping someone as opposed to serious dueling. But the fact that they all have blowguns built in is really pretty cool. He's then tool dipped or plasti dipped the edge, so it's much stronger, though, again, not something you'd want to, you know, most serious LARPs like Amp Guard or, or those types wouldn't allow these at all. Afterworlds probably would, though I don't know how they'd feel about the blowgun. <laughs> Fascinating. Uh, but I really like that. Um, again, all the different lengths are blowguns, um, and he has three different lengths, each all with slightly different length handles. You've got the short sword one, which is very, very nice for, you know, just a quick draw sort of defend yourself from other melees. A more... Eh, not quite arming sword length. It's a little short for an arming sword. Not quite what I would truly call a short sword. All these terms, of course, people are going to pick about in the comments of, eh, it's actually this, it's actually that. Um, we made those terms up. Uh, anyway. Uh, this one's a, a better you know, almost a primary length. And then you have this one, which is a full long sword, but not with the full long sword handle. So it is more of a, a bastard sword, as it were. They're all light enough that you could wield them one-handed. Having the extra just gives you a little bit more versatility. Uh, but it has a very good length to the to a blowgun. So these will definitely be getting tested against each other. Um, as well as probably against some of the blowguns to see what kind of a range they get, um, what darts work well in them, how easy they are to use, how easy it is to you know load in a dart. And, um, he has used a, a bushing to create kind of an embouchure, so I like that. Anyway, yeah. So yes, his uh, all the links to his stuff will be in the description, and I look forward to running these through tests. See how well that PVC holds up. Um, pretty nifty. Now, well, that's probably not supposed to do that. Could use a little bit more glue on the blade, though I probably shouldn't have pulled it like that. Um, so I'll need to glue that on. But I wanted to actually take it off anyway, because I have orange Plasti Dip. So I could do these in my colors if I really wanted to. So yeah, I will have all the links to those in the description if you are interested in a Nerf foam buffer blowgun da, 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 da. or silly horn all right let's see if we can find something that's actually truly swag fan mail what do we have behind me it sounds like happiness definitely happiness almost certainly from the sparky the Santos, my own private Lego Santa Claus. What do we have in here? Oh my dear lord. There's no note! You can't send me something this awesome without a note! 
It is Kingdom's Mill Village Raid, and this is a set I have been personally eyeing for a very long time, but just hadn't pulled the trigger yet. And now, here it is. This is the set that has the goats. The only two goats that LEGO ever produced came in this set, and as a result, they're like 30 bucks a goat. I'd have mine smuggled in from Mexico. They got rejected at the border. <laughs> And now I have them. <laughs> and I have the barn. I built the barn vaguely based on the instructions and built my own. And now I have it. And the mill and the figures with the goats and the peasants and the bad guys and the pig. Chickens. That is magnificent. I'm... There's no note. I assume it's Sparky because he's amazing and awesome and this is incredible. And I cannot wait to build this. Saturday. I'll probably end up. I will have time on Saturday. And this will be built. And it will be glorious. Fabulous! Alright. Next! And we have a series of packages that I believe are all related. I already opened a few of them because I was too curious. Okay. So these first ones from the Amazon Fulfillment Service are Soda Stream Root Beer Soda Mix. Which is fascinating. I'm not sure what that means. And in this one we have root beer syrup from Italy for handcrafted sodas. Suspicious. And in this one we have, which I think this one is involved. Oh, this this is just more Sprecher root beer. Who sent me Sprecker? Who's responsible for this? Who sent me the Sprecker? Rat yourselves out. I must know. This is good. I was down to my last bottle. Sprecker. So good. Sprecker is my favorite root beer. And now I have more of it again. I'm gonna have to cook a buff. All right. Then we have this one. Fan voice. Orange Drops, Lime Drops, Unsweetened Natural Flavor Essence. <laughs> That's CO2. Okay. And this is apparently a soda stream. Turns water into sparkling water in seconds. Transform- well, oh, that's in French. So, uh, apparently, Sparky, I assume it was Sparky, I believe it was Sparky, my memory is atrocious, has sent me everything I need to make my own root beer. That is magnificent. Now I'm going to have to do research and studies, find out the best ways, the best flavors, recipes. Though there have got to be someone out there who has recipes. Give me, give me the recipes. And, and the... All of them. Sweet! I'm gonna put all this stuff. You people are the reason I need a bigger place. Keep sending me stuff. Which is awesome. But now I don't have any room for my stuff. Let's be here. I could kill a shark with this. Now I have a few more minutes before I have to go in and do some actual work. So I'll have to finish most of this tomorrow. This is going to be a really long video, and I apologize for that. All right, that's what we got in here. Yakathon. Sparky the Saint. Ha-ha. Er, look at this. Look at this. Chima. Looks like there's a gorilla. A wolf. A lion. And a gator. I don't think I had a gator. I think I actually do have one gorilla. And I did have a couple of wolves. I think that's a wolf. Should have looked like a wolf. Very cool. They're just extra parts. Spiders. That claw is neat. Their weapons are cool. He's got a giant gorilla hand. Super cool. I'm still not. I'm gonna. Oh, I'm gonna. 
Gonna have to come up with something to do with all of these anthropomorphic characters I've been sent. Okay, this is another one. I suspect it's more sparky. It is indeed! More Chima. Oh, it's a saber-toothed tiger pack. They're also icy zombie dudes. I didn't know they had saber-toothed tiger ones. Good lord. They had everything. They're fighting regular tigers. Interesting. Well, that is entirely cool. More by the book soon. All right, I have to go do some work. So this will return. And you'll have no idea that I ever went to work. You don't need to know that, but you do. You know. All right, one more before I go work, because I want what I believe is in this package. To Shalo, a surprise from Sparky the Saint. Black forest gummy worms. To go with my black forest gummy bears. Better not be full names, they are not. All of the gummies in all of the land. Now I'm gonna go eat gummies while I do work. 11.30 at night. Bah! That is a real first world problem. I'm good, all right. We shall return. Right, round two. Where was I? There it is. I was here. I need a package. Oh, right, we have a package. See what we got here. Thank you for accepting my commission. Oh, this is a commission. Oh, good Lord. That's not part of a commission. That's a giant bag of gummies. Good Lord. Oh, it looks so good. Yes, all right. Thank you for accepting the commission for painting my son and I's rapid pistol project. We are both very happy to help support your new project and are both looking forward to the awesomeness you will create with our blaster. In this box, you will find our blaster uh, shell, uh, also a five pound bag of gummies. And speaking about, uh, about in our emails, we made sure the gummies for. Uh, made sure to add more than enough, at least hopefully, gummies for you to enjoy. We did not add any Skittles because in the last fan mail video you mentioned that you already have 10 pounds of them. Thank you, and we are hoping to hear from you soon. Uh, Ruben and Ruben Jr. So, five pound bags of fat-free, gluten-free, low-sodium gummies to go with the five pounds of gummy worms that I was given. I now have 10 pounds of gummies. Twix, send me Twix next. All right. <laughs> so we have the shell from a rapid pistol that he has done that I'm gonna be doing a little bit of cleanup work on. So some of the cuts need to get cleaned up a little bit. Um, uh, yeah, that should get probably solidified a little bit and uh, then it needs a paint job which apparently I get to do whatever I want to. So I was wanting to do one of these and then auto strifes came out and so you're like oh, well I guess I'll just go with auto strifes. Uh, but uh, yeah this ought to be a fun little project to come up with a good paint scheme for. Put in the comments what you guys think would be a good paint scheme and I may use one of them. Yeah yeah. That is nice work. I approve. And thank you for the goomies. All of the goom and all of the land. All right. We have another package, which I suspect is also commission parts. Dear Captain Xavier, in this package you'll find the Strife, the NX, the NYX cage and flywheels for the commission we talked about, and some goomies and skittles for you to enjoy. If you want, you can do a review on the NYX cage and howler wheels for your channel. Oh, good lord. Isn't that party... I'm out of strife and... Oh! Haribo Goomies! Yeah. More Goomies. Out of strife! So! Yeah, yeah! That'll be lovely! Another commission. Yeah. Ha. Package! Hello, Captain Xavier! I have more cool stuff for you, including... The blaster that I said I was going to mod for you, which is fired by moving your hand up while on its grip. And it looks tackily welded together, which is the look 
I was going for. And could you please solder the wire back to the external circuit board on my fire strike and send it back? Hope you enjoy your stuff. Well, this appears to be a pistol target. So that's super cool. Oh, look at that. Uh huh. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. I see what you did there. Yeah. I like how that effect. Yeah, it does look like it was very poorly welded, which is a neat aesthetic. Definitely very uh, post apocalyptic y, more so than a lot of the. The Nerf stuff, which is vaguely meant to look like it's been cobbled together, but never really has that feel, where that does look like somebody spot-welded a blaster together. That trigger mechanism is fascinating. I dig it, sir. What do I have here? Bits. Bobs. A sight. Hmm. Stock attention. Oh, targets. 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 I have no idea. Cylinders. A bunch of random darts. What needs soldering where? What does this do? It doesn't appear to be a broken solder. Email me. Explain to me what I'm supposed to be fixing on this thing. No idea. Anyway, yeah, email me. Explain to me what I'm fixing, and I'll fix it and send it back. Cool. Fun stuff. Good stuff. Particularly like that. That is coming with me to Afterworlds. Because I'm playing a different character, and this will be a good option for him. Kind of. I like that. At first I was like, well, how do you, how do you re accurately fire it? But it is just a matter of flexing your wrist, and you can do it without... Without taking, without adjusting where you're aiming. So that is a really neat, that is neat looking. All right. And a target! Which I could probably shoot at with, I assume these are good for 22. Maybe not. Let me know. Anybody know if this is 22 caliber rated? 1022, that is. Very cool. Urgh. Nothing else. I will have something to shoot at in science videos. Most excellent. Next! Pretty sure this is another commission one, or possibly diagnostic and repair. Dear Cap, enclo I enclosed stuff I hope you like. Enjoy my old blasters. Have fun. Your friend, Joe. P.S. Do you have any extra six-round dart mags? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I have a lot. Are you wanting one? Email me. We can talk. So is this actually... No, this... Alright, this is just cosmetic. And that paint feels like that chalk paint. It's got an interesting texture to it. I actually... I, I kind of like it. It's, it's slightly abrasive. And a bunch of darts. And a double strip. All silvery. Which is lovely. Very cool. And, ooh, darts and half darts. Nice. Well, thank you so much. This one I also assume is a uh, commission one. Whatever's in here, apparently valuable. Ugh. Ah. It's a hornet. I seem to recall there was talk of repairing a hornet. What else is in here? Oh. There is more. I don't see! Isn't it? The Lord only knows what's going on here. Hmm. Interesting. I assume these are repaired. I'll have to check my emails and figure out who it came from and what they want. And all that jazz. A small package that got overlooked, but I believe to be more Lego from the Saint. Yep. Legos from Sparky the Saint. Ooh. 
Lava rocks. I needed a few more of these for the lava room in my castle. Very cool, sir. You anticipate my every whim. All right. Here we've got an interesting looking one with cobwebs on it. No return address. So, who knows what's going on here? All of the duct tape and all of the land, that's what's going on here. Oh, good lord. Hi, Captain. It's me again. I thought it would be a cool way to show my name. Halo Scorn. Don't check me out on YouTube. I have nothing. <laughs> well, all right then. Some kind of a water rocket. Some foam baseballs. Cones! Cones are always useful. One of the small Lego tubs from a Lego store. A Buzz Lightyear bubble blower. A bunch of bottle caps. We fought back. Teen resistor to the Holocaust. What is it? Oh, I think I have one of these. The stock from something. That could be very useful in an integration. Very nice. A foam football. Split. Hot wheel cars. Some kind of a pouch. A reflecting disc thing. A toy frog. Tractor. Another Buzz Lightyear. Here, a Star Wars poster. Phantom Menace. Very cool. Lego! Another crocodile dude! Now I've got two of them. More random Lego. Oh, rock versions other than, rather than the lava versions. Oh, I'm just storing left and right here. I'm gonna pull out the Lego. Because it's got a place to go. A penguin glued to a bottle cap. That's weird. Here's what these actually look like. It appears to be a survival handkerchief with all sorts of important and useful life-saving information on it. Very cool. A bucket full of... stuff. Candy, tubes, flashlights, markers. Where do you get all this stuff? It's like the barrel from a Busby blaster. More markers, screws, springs. Candy, more springs, Yoshi, part of a wasp nest. A slinky! And a foam stress ball. I have no idea. Marvel ice cube tray. Cool! It'll go well with my Star Wars ones. A whole bunch of these blue Lego gem things, which are pretty cool. I'm gonna have to find somewhere to put them. A couple of smashed pennies. One's a buffalo and one's a turtle. Some pretty rocks. More bottle caps. A button. A screwdriver bit. A very strange looking car. And a cozy. Ah, and a dice. I got a five. Well, sir, this is a genuinely random assortment of stuff. You never know what I'm going to get. I will see what I can do for finding uses for some of this. Some of it is quite obvious, others not so much. And that one. Oh, this one's for Walcom. Cool. He will appreciate that. Now, right then. Cones. Cones are very useful. We use those in our wars a lot. Excellent. Me excellent. Thank you very much. This one isn't exactly fan mail, it's it's another commission, really. Somebody bought this from Out of Darts, but then realized they didn't have any way of actually assembling it. So they sent it to me for assemblage. This is a Jupiter kit. So I get to put together a Jupiter. Oh, it's in gold. Look at that. That is lovely. They really are magnificently compact. Yeah, yeah. That is going to be loads of fun to assemble, so I'll get to have a Jupiter build video. I will definitely, this time, actually watch Out of Darts' video before I try it, so I don't 
completely monkey it up. Very cool. That'll be a fun thing to build. I'm just trying to not miss any packages because there are so flippin' many of them. I think I'm down to the last one, which is another one of these awesome ones from Jimmy Bar. We have a foam sword. Oh, it's the one from, it's the Disney one from uh, Sleeping Beauty. It's got Maleficent on it. Very nifty. I shall put it with my collection. Oh boy. What I think it is. Saw it at Goodwill. Just had to have it for you. Yes. So, oh, what do we got here? Diagnostic and Repair Quick 16. I got it back together once. Just had to pull it apart again. For the life of me, can't get the thing back together. Still haven't worked properly. All right, well, I think I've done one of these before. So that shouldn't be too hard. What do we got here? Cause it's my birthday and I wanted to. All the bits are in here somewhere. Enjoy! He got me an evader. That is so nice of him. I assume. What? How? This is uncomfortable. I don't like it. But I'm not one to argue. Uh, oh, okay. That is fantastic. I know somebody who would probably appreciate it a great deal more than me. Maybe I shall trade it away after doing a review. I like the barrel, though. I do like that barrel. Hopefully. There it is. Magwell. Lovely. All right, what else do we have in here? Packing materials. We have. More Haribo gummies. We have more Albanese gummy. Exotics. Gummy lifesavers. Black Forest gummies. God, I'm gonna die of being a sweet mullery. More Albanese. Gummy Sour Patch Kids. More Haribo gummies. Right, well, now I have more gummies than I have Skittles. So, Twix? Nerds rope. Sweet. I'm having that for lunch. What do we have here? Ah, it's stuck. Oh, no. Leave off. <laughs> Diagnostic repair snapfire pistol with new trigger. I just can't get the new 3D printed trigger to seat right when I installed it. The catch doesn't sit high enough to catch the plunger head. I tried some sanding on the parts. It helped, but it still needs more help. The second new trigger is in there too. Can you fix it for the upcoming Snap 2.0? Yes, be careful when you open the bag, the trigger pin is loose inside. All right, well, I was able to get the uh, new triggers to work on mine, so we will give it a try. There's a card. I found the card. Stop it, Mike. Seriously, where does he get these cards? I mean, like, seriously. Captain Xavier, Captain Level all nerf. There were several things that almost didn't make it in this box due to being late for work, but I somehow managed. It has been a while since I sent you anything, but I feels like I never stopped. Anyway, down to business. The items for diagnostic and repair are in here. Also, the candidate for Kenateki K26. Other than that, everything else I am sending in here is for my birthday, because what better way to celebrate it than to send Sir Captain Xavier do something or other <laughs> a box of loot. And the fact that you're sending me stuff for your birthday uh, is just cool. There. Another messenger pistol before I can't seem to stop finding these. <laughs> I do like the messenger. All right. So this is the K26 candidate. Can this thing take a K26? I think if this thing looked at a K26, it would break. But we're going to try it. Ugh. Ah, the evader darts. Why? Why? Yeah. Ooh, another one of these bracelets found. This is a goodwill. It's in your colors. What more is there to say? This? No, yeah, that works for me. Does it fit? No. It's a little tight. It needs like one more loop. So I'll have to find a different use for it. Perhaps attaching things to web gear or something. Very cool. We have a, th a thing. 
more spring or uh, yeah, Snapfire what's it? And apparently a spring. Very cool, very cool. Oh, this is probably probably more stuff for the Snapfire. Okay. Get back in the box! Alright, the inv evader instructions. Very good. A bunch of chocolate coins. Last but not least, we have whatever is in here. I thought you might like this. Happy birthday to me for you, Jimmy. Is this just what's in here? It is. He sent me a new heat gun. Well, that is just entirely wicked. Okay, so it has low and high and off. And is... Definitely in better condition than my current one. Very, very cool. You can never have too many tools. And this way, <clears throat> when I get my makerspace up and running, I will have an extra heat gun. Most excellent. You, sir, spoil me. As does Sparky, as do all of you. So much amazing stuff. So many fun projects to work on. I'm glad I'm finally able to do commissions again. Um, and I enjoy doing the diagnostic and repair stuff. So... That is going to be a lot of fun. I now have, like, five years worth of Goomies and uh, Skittles. So, yeah. Twix? Bury me in Twix next. Why not? Uh, <laughs> so much cool stuff. I'm looking forward to trying the new root beer making stuff. I've got Lego stuff to build. I've got projects to work on. It is going to be awesome. You guys are awesome. This is awesome. I hope I managed to open all the packages. If I find any that I missed, I'll... Save them for next time, I suppose. Um, yeah. Anyway, sorry this is going to be a ridiculously long video. Those of you who actually sat all the way through it, um, you're, you're insane. But you're awesome. Very cool. Thank you so much. Uh, if you want to contact me, all the email addresses will be in the description. If you want to send me stuff, the mailing address is down there. Uh, my Patreon is down there. The GoFundMe for the uh, Makerspace is down there. Though it's almost done because you guys are awesome. And, uh, yeah. All right. Enough out of me. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching.